What's up, Kelvin gang? All right, so we're here with the linear, you know, moving problem here. So we got this meter stick, right? And it's starting horizontal, and then it swings down on a hinge down to this position. And we got four parts to this problem. So what's to find is the change in uh, gravitational potential energy, the change in uh, angular momentum, the change in uh, linear velocity, and it wants us to compare to a particle that falls that long. So let's start with change in uh, gravitational potential energy, right? So we got, uh, so we know that change in gravitational potential energy is, you know, u final minus u initial. And then u is equal to mass, gravity, change in height. Or I guess height, but you know, delta u is change in height. So we can go ahead and write this out as u is equal to mass times gravity, and then it'll be height initial minus, or height final minus height initial. So what height are we taking here, right? This is a good question that I need to know. Uh, it's basically the center of mass, right? When you have a system that's rotating around its center, you want to find how much the center of mass goes down. Because if you take the end point here and then you see it swing all the way down, you know, it'll be like, it'd go down a whole meter. But we're not using a whole meter, it doesn't change. We're looking at the center of mass. So the center of mass, uh, let me draw this the red marker, is, you know, here, of course, and then it's here, and it's going to swing down, and it's going to go halfway down. So that change in height there, is equal to 0 0.5 meters, right? It starts at, you know, if we're taking this to be the baseline, this is height is equal to zero, this is one, and then this is 0 0.5. So it goes down 0 0.5. So height final, right? That's a U, G, is equal to mass, gravity. So it starts at one, or it ends at 0 0.5, and then it starts at one. And then, you know, you see, so the mass is uh, 0 0.18, times 9.81 times negative 0 0.5 change in gravitational potential energy. You can calculate this. Negative 0 0.883 joules. So there's part one. I'm going to write that over here. Negative 0 0.883 joules. There you go. So that's part A. Let's look at part B. Part D wants you to find the linear velocity at the bottom. So this is going to be a bit more tricky. Uh, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use our work energy theorem. What is the work energy theorem? So it says uh, that the non-conservative work, which is basically friction or air resistance, which in this problem we're not going to consider. So our non-conservative work is going to be equal to zero, right? So basically this is just a way to write our system. is equal to the change in energy or a change in energy, basically, delta K. There's gonna be a lot of energies, right? So let's think about what energy is happening on the system. Well, the system is gonna have rotational energy, right? But it's also gonna have gravitational energy, right? We said here that the gravitational potential energy changes, so that's also a change in energy. So when it goes from here to here, it's gonna change in rotational kinetic energy, and it's gonna change in gravitational potential energy. So let's write that out. So we said that this is equal to zero. So let's see, so it's gonna be delta K rotational, and then plus change in uh, gravitational potential energy. So let's expand this out some more, right? So this is uh, k rotational final minus k rotational initial. That's what delta k is. And then plus, we have this number, right? This is negative 0 0.883. So let's expand it out some more. I'm gonna grab a chair so I can sit. Okay, zero is equal to, so k rotational is one half I W squared, uh, so this is final, right? Uh, and this is uh, minus one half I rotational initial squared uh, plus negative 0 0.883. So at the beginning, it's starting at rest, right? So there's not going to be any initial uh, rotational uh, energy. So this is basically not something we need. So we need to expand out I. We're looking for W, so we need to expand out what I is. So I is the moment of inertia. Now for a, a rod like this, inertia for a rod, you know, if you have any basically like long system like this, I is equal to one third mass radius squared. So we're gonna plug that right in. One third mass radius squared, W squared minus 0 0.883. So we're looking for W. So what we're going to have is, let's go ahead and move this over to the other side and then multiply it by 2 just to get that half out. Or I guess we can multiply it by 6 because it's 1 half over 1 third. It's going to become 1 over 6. 
So it's going to be 6 times, so we're adding that over and then multiplying by 6. So 0 0.883. And then this is going to be the mass radius squared w squared. So we know it's mass and we know it's radius. Its radius is 1, so it's basically not going to change anything in this system because 1 squared is 1. So you're going to take 6, 0 0.883. Then divide that by the mass, um, 0 0.180, 0, is equal to w squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the square root of this side, and then you're going to get that w uh, is equal to 5.43 radians a second. Right? Very nice. So uh, yeah, that's how you uh, that's how you do that. Pretty simple. Let's go to part C. Uh, I guess we can put this over here. 5.43 radians a second. And let's move on. Okay. Now, next part, it wants us to find the velocity, right? So we know that uh, linear velocity is equal to angular velocity times radius. So we're trying to find it the uh, linear velocity at the end, so we're going to take the radius at the end. So velocity is equal to the number we just got, 5.43, times its radius, which is 1. And velocity is also equal to 5.43. Very cool, right? But this is in meters a second, not in radians a second. So this is 5.43 meters a second. Now wants us to compare this velocity to what would happen if you just dropped an object. So you take a you take an object at rest up here and it falls one meter. Right? And it goes to here. So what's us to find that? Let's do it. So uh, we can use a kinematics equation, right? So velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared uh, plus two times acceleration, uh, y minus y naught. So let's look at this. So velocity initial to zero. Uh, we're taking initial height, I guess, to be one. So its final is going to be zero. So basically, it's going to be one. So we're looking at velocity squared is equal to two times gravity times negative one. Or I guess, I guess it's basically the same. If you just have a positive one, you don't want to have that negative one. So you're going to say velocity is equal to two to gravity squared of all that. And then you get this, and this is 4.43 meters a second. Right, okay. So, you know, so velocity is equal to 4.43. So it actually is moving faster if you have this rod, right? It's kind of interesting how that works, isn't it? So, you know, if you have this rod, it's going to have a stronger velocity going in this direction than a ball that's just dropped from straight the rest would be. I guess that kind of makes sense, uh, if you can try to rationalize that. Yeah, that's how you solve this kind of problem. Uh, if you need some more help on your physics homework, come to me, because I like doing physics problems. So check out my playlists. Uh, yeah, and thanks for the support, guys. See you in the next one.